Hello. What is going on? Hi. Hi. You got your baby. I do. We tried to. I tried to put her down for a nap, and uh, that was a no go. She's uh, uh -oh. she wants to be held today. So. Uh, What's her name? Her name is Viviana. 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 Yeah. It's funny. I was, gonna name, I was gonna name her Holly Aaron or Aaron Holly, <laughs> but my wife vetoed that hard, unfortunately. What? She didn't like what is up with Why that? would your wife do that? I don't know. I don't know. I was I was thinking about Giggles being the middle name. I was thinking, you know, Holly Giggles Aaron or something along those lines. I was thinking that oh, would have been great, but that would have been very appropriate. That would have been really my wife wasn't into it. I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> is that dad joke number one? Yes. <laughs> I can't have a lot of dad jokes up here. Oh, good. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you follow Rad Dad on Instagram? Uh, no. I you know need to. We probably should. Yeah. Oh it's my god. Great. Oh, I can't even believe that. Rad You're Dad gonna is have a fantastic the best time. page. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> well, this 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 show is sponsored to you. Uh, sponsored by Rad Dad. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. We should we? Yeah. That we should definitely have that. <laughs> it's just all sorts of dad joke memes. Um, I thought. Uh, I follow that's several. All, so yeah. one. That's pretty much all that Sean and I send each other is a bunch of dads <laughs> who are usually wrapped in with some kind of a Marvel or, or DC or Batman reference. So if it hits both of those, we're, we're golden. That's, uh, there are that's sometimes, I think sometimes there are that, like yeah. it, it all goes together. Oh yeah, totally. It's definitely made, I think by millennials. So there's like those kinds of like references where like your dad oh, has like, oh, like the long white socks and the jorts and the white New Balance, you know? <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my outfit. What are you talking about? That's, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. Oh, poor Viviana. All those <laughs> memories. <laughs> dad out i will say i'm gonna draw the line i'm never getting crocs i'm not a crocs guy my dad yeah. loves crocs and he's got these bright orange uh crocs that match the so he's a softball coach and they match the uh the uniform and it just it's like dad you can't do it just please don't do it <laughs> that's, yeah <laughs> that's hilarious i have some friends who are really into those mm -hmm. they say they're very comfortable i mean I'm i would sure like, why else would you wear i them? know <laughs> Yeah. They they sure yeah. as hell better be comfortable because they're not. That's terrible because they're they're ugly as sin. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But in like yeah. you know, ugly things can be cute. You know, that's like also a whole thing. Is like ugly cute things somehow. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's not you. <laughs> that was accidental. <laughs> um, well, uh, definitely. First off, want to thank both of you so much for for being on the show. And uh, we're super pumped to be here. This is episode number nine of Deadlifts, Dogs, and Dad Jokes. And uh, our guests today are a couple of really awesome lifters and even better people. Uh, they have big lifts and even bigger hearts. So, uh, yes, I thought about that today. I thought of that today in the shower, by the way. So, it seems um, But uh, we yeah. have <laughs> coaches Holly Myers and Aaron Grogan. What's going on? Well, we're good we we're went good. i didn't realize i didn't realize the full extent of the name of yeah. the show like uh so i feel like we should have brought shelby back well i, I was completely out of the loop i was just told just to show up so <laughs> he doesn't know what oh. he's doing <laughs> we're, we're just on here talking to yeah, people yeah. yeah that's what we're doing <laughs> 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 right, um, <laughs> the show was renamed it was originally beers and bells and oh, uh nice. so one of the local breweries and there was a there was that kind of a uh, of an, an emphasis so we've kind of changed things up a little bit mm -hmm. um, right. life changed a little bit so my priorities uh were altered uh a bit so um <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> so but uh but yeah so how are how are you both doing how's life it's good it's busy but it's good <laughs> good yeah <laughs> we will just uh, we have our little beverages here just made a cup of coffee and she you has some oh there we go coffee. i have hey, that's, oh, life, no. man. that's the way to go coffee all down. Oh, I'm empty handed. I feel I feel so left out. Oh. oh yeah. I feel like Tommy, I don't know. I have never met you. No, I no, I literally just jumped in. I sorry. I'm uh, I'm the one that you guys have not worked with. I'm Tommy. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi Tommy. Hi Tommy. <laughs> I was like, oh, is Sushma gonna come here? Because I was like, not that I'm glad you're here, Tommy. But mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, I'm always, I, we wanna meet Sushma too. Yeah. I I really I've lobbied really hard for uh, Shishma to be a full-time uh, host on here with us, but she's very busy. She actually uh, took on a new training job, and I'm glad she's busy. Uh, yeah. Selfishly, I want her all, all just all to ourselves, yeah. but unfortunately, we have to, we have to 
we have to share her. So oh, totally. <laughs> well, no, I totally get why he wouldn't be able to make it. But anyway, maybe we'll just have to do a little call. Just our, just me and her or something. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know I said this earlier. I'm obviously very excited to have both of you on. And this is, I don't want to brag or anything. This is actually my second time Zooming with, uh, with you two. I don't want to rub it in with anybody, but. Uh, this isn't my first time zooming with the <laughs> Well, I mean, Sean. I mean, Sean could say the same. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm the only rookie zoom. All right, yeah. okay. uh, uh, I'm learning so much. I've been on for 36 seconds, and so much. Okay, <laughs> so, we were super pumped to have you here. I I took literally took notes on things I want to ask you both about. Oh, I'm really fun. excited to talk about. And don't worry, it's not Lincoln Douglas debate or anything. I just, I'm just oh. interested to, to see what you think. And uh, obviously, we're going to talk about your new program you just came out with uh, later on. Definitely want to talk about that. Cool. And uh, we'll link all of that information below for everybody so that they can find you. I would say probably 80% of our audience knows who you are, because we've shown your training videos to most of our clients. Um, so I say Aww. most of them have heard of you. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so we pulled up like the when I was teaching the bent press to a couple of a uh, couple of my clients, I I pulled up one of Aaron's videos and I said, uh, "Do you see this video?" And they watched it. I said, uh, "Okay, do it like that, uh, <laughs> just like that." <laughs> so it was a great, uh, a great yeah. maybe not the same weight, but uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe someday. Yeah, someday. Yeah. Rule out. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so Aww. I guess we could let's open up with uh, with a, a little bit about who you both are. You know, we've obviously we met you on Instagram. Uh, we've we've formed a, an awesome relationship with you both. Uh, Sean and I have both uh, completed two of your programs, and um, we've uh, you know done the Sinister Special, which we'll talk about. And uh, one thing I love is you're both definitely about the relationship side of coaching. You know, you're not just that the buy it now mentality. I think that's what made me love you both so much is that when someone hits that button and they purchase the program, the relationship continues. You know, we, you, you guys hopped on a Zoom with me. It was, you know, it, it wasn't even, you know, you weren't even being paid for it. You have, you know, DMs with me back and forth and helped me with little tips on the, especially yeah. with the wristbands for the getups. Mm -hmm. um, you're both very relationship driven, which I love. I think that's awesome. To kind of um, go into the next thing, what would you say is your driving philosophy as coaches? Oof, such a big question. They're not yeah, coming out <laughs> swinging. <laughs> yeah good morning yeah good morning <laughs> good morning well, yeah um good thing we got our beverages philosophy. Wow. well i don't know why I don't think... you go first okay I, don't wrong. Wrong. I don't know <laughs> i was just gonna um okay i don't know if it's possible right in this moment to like uh, totally encapsulate it that feels like a lot of pressure but like oh, cool. um, <laughs> but i feel like again like i like i love what you said I feel like I haven't heard that reflected back to us in that, in the way that you just said is like that you, that we come off as very relationship driven in our coaching yeah. and in mm -hmm. with everyone we work with, but not even just, not even like people who pay us, but like if you buy a program, well, I guess that's paying us in a certain way, but like if you buy a program or even if you don't like, mm -hmm. and you just have a question, like we're totally open to helping. I mean, there's a balance between like giving too much to where you're like, you don't want to like resent yourself for giving time to people, you know, of course, cause like whatever, but, but as much as we can, we, yeah. we try to like, just be helpful resources for people mm -hmm. um, who are on similar journeys or very different journeys, but like who all come together around strength and like, the beautiful power of movement to like, you know, help people feel like, like themselves and mm -hmm. good, like in terms of just powerful. And so, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> there's a lot we could say about our philosophy. I feel like that could be yeah. like the entire thing, but, <laughs> um, but in general, yeah, like I love that, that you feel that, that what you're getting is that we're re really relationship driven because so much of what coaching there's like, a lot of like the other side of that, I think in the mm -hmm. fitness world where it's not about the person, but it's about, uh, like math and it's uh, not that math is bad, <laughs> but it's about like numbers and mm -hmm. very like trying to be objective about like, and the science of like what works, what should work for this person. And it doesn't take into account like the actual human humans that you're working with. Yeah. How was that? Did I do? Fantastic. Okay, great. Great job. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> I love that. Yeah. So that's, so yeah, definitely relationship focused. Uh, and Aaron, did you have anything to say? I didn't want to jump in on you. No, she did a fantastic job. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, yeah. be right there. So <laughs> you're both obviously, and I think really, I think relationship driven is definitely one thing that definitely attracted me to both of you uh, as far as coaching goes. One thing I also liked is that um, obviously this last year was very challenging for a lot of people with the pandemic and all the crazy stuff happening. Um, I love how you both have leaned on and listened to coaches. You know, we're, you know, we could mention Chrissy King and uh, coach justice and, and decolonized fitness, and a lot of, a lot of other people that I can't even name. Yeah. Um, but you're, I love how you're both learning and studying and, and getting outside of your comfort zone, you know? I thought it was really cool that you were, that you both really got into the social justice stuff. You were learning more about it, learning about, um, you know, the very large umbrella that is that, that topic and, uh, and being and challenging yourselves and, and getting out of your comfort zone. So the, the, the ebook that you did, the bent press ebook, you did the fundraiser, you just did the same thing with your new program. You did a fundraiser. I love it. It's easy for someone to use a hashtag or, or post a meme or something or share something on a story, but um, I love it when people actually put their money where their mouths are. And that's what I really loved about you too, is you're, you know, you, you, you talk the talk, but then you also walk the walk when it comes time to. Thank you so much. And I yeah. think people really get on board with that too. Like mm -hmm. um, they, they want to support that. And I think that that's um, not necessarily like an excuse for them to like buy our programs, but when those things happen, I think that people are just extra excited to be a part of a thing like that. So yeah. Yeah. But then it's also like, um, it's important to, of course, be like, yes, that's amazing. Like, it's amazing that we're, I mean, it comes though with some privilege, right? Like not everyone can afford to give, right. give a percentage of what they make over, you know, like, yeah, they rely on it. so it's, um, it's important to us that like, it's not only that we're giving money, but that in other ways, we're also doing like our own work of, you know, learning about our own like implicit biases and like all, trying to every day live aligned with who we want to be. Not that we ever actually get there, but it's like, it's like a process in a way, like a basically, yeah, it's, it's a never ending thing. And so it's not like, it's important to not be like, Oh, we gave a thousand dollars to someone like <laughs> we're done. It's way more than that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's, uh, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to give it over to these fellows. I know I'm, I'm, I'm a uh, monopolizing time. I'm sorry. What I, that's another thing I loved about it was you're doing a great job. Keep going. No, yeah. <laughs> you guys are, you guys are doing, you know, again, we're you're using hashtags and sharing things, but you guys were taking courses. So you were showing us some of the stuff you learned, like, I know um, we, uh, the three of us took the uh, anti-racism course with uh, uh, Chrissy King, which was awesome. It was really good. I love Chrissy. Shout out to Chrissy King. She's, uh, yeah. she's really, she's really badass. Uh, probably stronger than all of us combined. Um, <laughs> but uh, super, super lovely, super lovely lady. But I love the fact that you're, you're taking courses, you're investing your time, your money, and your energy into these organizations. And it's just, I, I just love it. Because, you know, when it comes to, people's personas on Instagram or Facebook, politicians, you know, we can go down this rabbit hole and, and how many times have we been disappointed when someone preaches a certain message, yet their actions do not coincide with that, right? You know, their actions don't really uh, align with their values. So of course, we're human beings, we're not perfect, we're all going to make mistakes. Um, yeah. But I would say that 80-20 rule, like 80% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, you are um, acting out uh, your values. So I think that was, I just love that. I love you both. Um, would you want to get married? No, I'm just <laughs> you oh, but with the baby too. We'll all just, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Baby, so. uh, well, that's so funny that you say that too, because literally this week um, I'm starting a trauma informed weightlifting class. So it's, or it's, it's called, I don't know if it's called exactly that, but I shared it in our newsletter, but it's like, um, teaching about what it means to be trauma informed uh within the lifting like within strength the strength space and how like lifting can be a way of like healing trauma potentially like a one way of helping awesome. so i'm starting that and then aaron's taking uh, yeah, this, yeah this week i'm uh will be the first <laughs> class first of three 
uh, with uh, Justice um, on toxic masculinity. So it's three. Oh, three yeah. I'm taking his course. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we're, yep, we're doing that. <laughs> we're always doing something it. like that. Still trying to learn today. Fantastic. Yeah, actually, that reminds me, I want to, I'm going to sign up. Uh, I want to become a Patreon supporter for, for them, Fitness for All oh, Bodies. Really? Cool. They're yeah, awesome we, stuff. We have been so. for a little bit. It's nice. It's a nice way to support people, like, yeah. continually. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a minimal, obviously minimal financial investment. And it's, uh, it's awesome. So I'm going to let yeah. these guys take over. Uh, fire away, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's a good segue into um, kind of like how you keep talking about like what's next, this and that. Like, um, in the same way that we're all like students of strength, however you want to say that, and we'll continue to learn. It like you're progressing on more than one thing. Like, there's always something next. It's almost to the point where I feel like there's you're both triplets, and and you delegate the work to everybody <laughs> so you get everything done. Because I feel like even there, are, I know there's two of you, but like I don't. It seems like you have so much going on, but you do it so well, you know, Aww, um, and, you know, so nice. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a, you have a, you, you have your fingers in like, mul- like every pot, multiple pots, whatever that phrase is. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's not like you're spreading yourself too thin and doing like half ass work on, on yeah. all of it, like very well done to the point where like, if you, if you couldn't actually get it all done, you know, optimally, you wouldn't do it probably, yeah. uh, you know, cause like you've got, you guys have the one-on-one coaching in person on, and online um you know you have the one-stop shop uh program mm-hmm. that you can buy and then you also have programs that are more in um interactive where it's like a monthly thing so it seems like you cover a lot of bases and then correct me if i'm wrong do you also do you also sometimes go into a gym um you know maybe pre-covid to train people to like is it or is it primarily just online stuff yeah so yeah before we were at a gym um just as like independent contractors doing a few sessions yeah and, uh, yeah um, and now we, um, we converted our patio space, uh, so that we just train people at our house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I, you know, I love, I love seeing that, that get cooler and cooler. Like the, you put the roof up, you get the, yeah. uh, stuff. you know, it, that set up. It transformed. um, yeah. So that, again, just furthers my point as far as like, yeah. you guys have seem to have it all figured out, but at the same time, you're you definitely, you definitely do not. <laughs> well, but at the same time. You, you're willing to figure it out more exactly like it's yeah. not, you're never you're never done you know yeah. on, on multiple multiple facets so um I guess I kind of have two questions um the net the second one tying into a topic that you guys want to discuss today as you should um your your newest um uh your newest program or, or for, for coaching and whatnot but um I guess my first question would be like did, how hard did you find it to to like kind of roll out on all those things I just mentioned and like make it work like did it come easy did it was it was it a slow build as far as like helping people in many many ways that's such a great question yeah we were just talking a little bit about this but I want you to you to go first and then I want to talk okay so I would say yeah some of them were definitely easier than others some of them were out of necessity and then some of them have been a very very slow build uh, and like really hard for us to get the motivation, not necessarily like to do, but to actually like do the work in it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we started our business, our online business, uh, and just like by ourselves, not working with the gym out of necessity. So that one was easy. We just had to do it. <laughs> We're like, well, we don't have a gym. We, we don't have jobs. We don't have a gym. What do we have? Do we so do? we know we know some people. <laughs> we, we know how to swing a kettlebell. People <laughs> familiar. Yeah. Us, there you go. There's like a thing called social media where people like share things and they get to know each other from across the world. And like uh we could probably do that. <laughs> so it was that's kind of was our approach. Yeah. Yeah. But you start. keep going. And then like as far as like um uh, like our one-on-one people who we interact with uh, that one's extremely easy to do because we have to, you know, meet their deadline or with the time, you know, obviously because there's an appointment or they on their schedule. So that one's no problem. You mean easy, yeah. like it's easy to, what do you mean? Cause it sounds like it's like to find structure. Like, yeah. Uh, not necessarily to structure. Cause we've had our, our, uh, our difficulties with structure. We figured as well. out trial and error with structure. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I mean like, uh, getting to it so like like you said like some of our slow build yeah 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 um and then like our diy programs a lot of those were very easy to me i'm really interested in programming i just find it fun um unlike most people i think most people just don't like it um which is okay, okay. 
Love it. Yeah. yeah. Great. So yeah, well, I think it's fun. And when I'm like, I'll, I write a program and then I try it out on um, either myself or us. And then some of our students, I'm like, oh, this thing works really this is well. pretty good. Or I bet other people would like it too. So yeah. then that's how we develop mm-hmm. those. Um, oh, cool, cool. Yeah. And then, but the slow burn or the slow, whatever, uh, <laughs> not the slow burn. Whatever. Um, oh, this, um, this programming handbook that we're coming out with, uh, Hot and Fresh um that we started well we've had the idea to do something like it like for a while like yeah. because people have been asking us like our students like especially the one-on-ones um but some one-on-ones who have gone into our group programs too have been asking us like so wait like just programming questions about their program like yep. why am i doing this this way or this seems like a weird way to do this but it seems like it's working and i don't know why yep. like they've had questions like that and we've been like oh yeah like happy to tell you and whatever but then they have more questions when we tell them so they're like I I just want to understand like because there's something that I'm just not getting like the the whole picture here I'm getting like the details but I don't know like I don't get this wider picture so um but yeah so we've had this idea for a while not this exact like we're gonna make a programming handbook that's pizza themed we didn't know that for (laughs) We didn't know that like a while ago, but anyway, we've started in the past, I don't know, six or so months, like building up to uh, releasing it and it's going to come out at the end of this month, but, but in any case, yeah. So that will be like seven months in the works. But like, (laughs) yeah, sometimes things aren't just in. So like a lot of what we do is actually really creative and I'm, I studied art in school. I'm an artist and Um, Aaron doesn't think of himself as creative, but he is in a lot of ways. But anyway, a lot of like the creative process is like, you can't like force it to happen like exactly when you want it sometimes. Absolutely. It just like has to feel like the right time and just things have to like kind of just mesh to be like, oh, this feels right. And this feels like the right time to do this. And so (laughs) in terms of like how different different aspects of our work have like come to be (laughs) um it just like some of them that are kind of a little bit more creative like they just need a little bit more time and space to like come through when they're ready Mm -hmm. um so yeah but it can be easy to like if you just stumble across whatever our website or our instagram and be like oh they have all this stuff how'd they do this all at once or they always had it like it was always like this and that's it's our, we're in continually in process and like never done. Like, like yeah. you also said, well, that's I, my point. I, I would hate for someone to be like, Oh my God, I'm a new online coach. I'm supposed to look like, I'm supposed to look like a, I have everything that Aaron and Holly have yeah. when we've started like almost wait, two and a half years ago. We're, we're, we're approaching three years, almost now. three years in mm-hmm. August, I think. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. three years in August. so we also had the, I mean, we also started before the pandemic. We started like a year and a half before that. So it wasn't like there wasn't that challenge too when you're first starting to like make it work online, which I know a lot of people are dealing with now. So anyway, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's my point. Clearly you guys didn't rush into it. Like you said, um, like six or seven months in the process. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could have put it out three months ago if it kind of seemed yeah. pretty good at the time, but it's no, you want to do it right. So, which again, I'm very excited for because just when I think you guys kind of covered pretty much all the bases, it's like, what are they going to do next? Again, yeah. like even the ebook for the um, ebook for the bent pressing, like I never would have thought that would come about, but it's such a nuanced movement that people probably do improperly. So, so you did your due diligence and put out a whole book on just that. So yeah. it's not like it's not just the programming or the one-on-one stuff or uh, the in-person stuff. It's like an ebook on one movement and then a handbook on programming, which I'm very much looking forward to flipping through because Absolutely. just like I, I love programming, but you know, it's I've gone through a, a program of yours, uh, both of you, and it's going to be cool to kind of just see a different approach and maybe how that can help my programming. So right. yeah, I I'm looking forward to reading it. So. Cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what we hoped. Like it, it, it just seems like. Uh, well, this is a big topic too, like a big <laughs> thing to open up. But basically, like in the fitness space, um, like it just seems like coaches feel like they're always competing with each other and never like wait. We're not. Um, 
it's like hard to feel like you can trust each other almost like there's this weird uh like unless you know people in person and you like work with them and in your type it's I think it's not um it's the exception not the rule to feel like you're really in a community of coaches that like wants to help each other and yeah. isn't threatened by other people's success. So like, mm-hmm. just exactly. because, you know, we had that and like, not going to lie. We also had that feeling about like, if we teach like the way we program, like is are all our students just going to leave us because now they know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like we're like, yeah. Oh, should we not do this? But yeah. that, that feels very like scarcity mindset. Right? right. So we are like, no, of course not. Like, there are many other reasons that people have coaches for, like, even if you can program for yourself, like there are plenty of coaches that we coach who are great at programming. They just don't want to do it for themselves. And they want someone else to like be in touch with about it. Yep. Yeah. Right. So it's, like, it's, not just, a yeah. thing. it's not like, it's not like if you work with a coach, you it's because you can't do it yourself. There's like, yeah, that that's yeah. So silly. Mm-hmm. like it's like you're just tired of thinking about it. You're like, I just don't want to think. Yeah, right. Yeah, and exactly. You- exactly. I mean, that's that's why that's why Sean's my coach, and I I've used this right. feel in times. I uh, I don't want to program for myself because I'm lazy, you know. And uh, <laughs> but there's also the social aspect, right? Like we, yeah. you don't want to just you don't want to train with a robot. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe that's your thing. But <laughs> I uh, I love the okay. social aspect. You know, Sean and I we train, and and he. You know, we, we shoot the shit with each other. We drop movie quotes and have fun and yeah. come up with stupid handshakes and it's fun. <laughs> and we have a good time. So. Right. Same. I yeah. mean, like I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call Aaron my coach, but we, we kind of coach each other. We don't have yeah. equal handshakes. We need to. We could try. So we need. We got dance moves though. We need. We have yeah. Dance. I love the dance moves, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have those, but we need a handshake and then we need a robot because actually uh, that sounds really interesting to train to have a training robot. Also, imagine what we would do with a robot back there while we were training. Like a physical robot yeah. sitting there. <laughs> I just, do you think it would load the bar for us? I think it would say great. things to us. That, oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> that so robot, I'd love it. Would like a robot. Yes, it would load and unload, take the bells in and out, <laughs> and then we'd like dance all around it. Yes. Yeah. That'd be that's. <laughs> Again, I keep I saying, think, what are they going to do next? And here we are tinkering with a robot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that could be our next big thing. Like invent the robot that loads and unloads. It's your training, buddy. <laughs> I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys can copy that. I'm not going to take it, I promise. <laughs> okay, well, it's on here. We have proof that it was yep. our idea. <laughs> yep. Intellectual property. It's proven. Probably not going to do that. <laughs> we'll see you on Shark Tank in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mark Cuban. <laughs> We actually have had other ideas about like inventions. Um, That's true. <laughs> I don't know if they're too secret to share. No, I, I um, in my um, my process of trying to figure out how to put up more weight with bent pressing, um, I ran into a wall with kettlebells. Liter- uh, right, that it, it's great up to a point. But then past that, it kind of sucks. Like it's too, it's too cumbersome. It's too much in one little space. It's like yeah. it changes um, because the bell is so big. Like it changes the physics of like the angle that you have to be at. And it's like, anyway. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I also absolutely hate bent pressing with a barbell. It's, it's too long in my opinion. And it just, it takes away from it. Uh, obviously the, the world record has been done with the barbell and other people like it and yeah. that's okay, but, he but just doesn't. there's gotta be a better way for it. So anyways, I was thinking about like, it would be cool to design some contraption where you could like, like a plate loaded kettlebell almost, but that's not like round and bulbous and putting sure. one pressure here. But like, if it could disperse the weight across your whole your arm, arm. <laughs> Yep. We haven't like, like, like a it weighted a sleeve, sleeve, like a weighted sleeve or a weighted glove. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah like a gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. A gauntlet, well, you, you say. Mm. You know? <laughs> I think it would be kind of cool. This but is, yeah. this, now I'm like envisioning you as like a superhero with your it's like your gauntlet is your like your power. Your bed press <laughs> power. <laughs> I love it. I do. It's so good. So I, yeah, we're right. gonna. I, I now I'm only gonna uh, picture Aaron with the gauntlet on, getting ready to snap, and he's gonna double the uh, 
the amount of kettlebells in the universe. That's going to be his uh, his use of the ones. <laughs> Honestly, we we could use that right about now. That'd be pretty sick. Thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right uh tommy you got anything um oh uh, like, so out of the three of us i'm the only one that doesn't really like know you guys so i'm actually yeah. a little more curious about how you got to where you are today oh. like what like how you got to doing this how you got into it how you've maneuvered your way up to here mm-hmm well, uh, like we said earlier, we uh, basically started our business out of necessity because right. um, we stopped working at a gym and had to figure out what to do. But we were coaches um, before starting our business. Uh, you were a coach for like four or so years. And I was for like three or three and a half, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, but we weren't, we didn't, neither of us uh, like planned to be coaches in uh, our earlier yeah. years, like it's just mm-hmm. something that we kind of came to later, which I think a lot of people, that is their story kind of too. Um, but yeah, that's definitely us. Like he, like to be very brief, like why don't you say, like you were the skinny video game kid. I'm still from, the skinny video game kid. Oh yeah. But with a little, a little bit, bit more skinny. muscles. <laughs> just a little uh, strong. Just, just a, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. We got to actually, we were just looking through a uh, uh, his old photo album of like him when when I was like a teenager and a kid. Yeah, and it just is so funny. Like his body looks is basically looks the same, but just a little bit more muscly. Yeah, if I wear a jacket and pants, like I you just can't tell. Person. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, yeah so, Florida. So I grew up in Florida. Um, I was not uh, into sports or strength training at all. Um, up until I was like 22, I started taking some martial arts classes and, um, I learned, uh, from my martial arts instructor about some kettlebells at his instructor school in, uh, in California. And, uh, he was like, yeah, they, they had these things called kettleballs or whatever he called them. (laughs) He didn't know anything. And, um, so I went and I looked it up and, uh, I bought a book and a kettlebell and I started training in my garage. Um, It was a 16 kilo, 16 kilo. Awesome. Cute little bell. Yeah. Aww. So, Aww. Yeah, that's not so that. when was that? What year was that? Um, that was like nine years ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I was, uh, yeah, I was like 23 or 24. I'm 33 now. So, yeah. Cool. Somewhere around then. Uh, <laughs> and I just trained by myself in my garage with some kettlebells uh, for a few years. And then um, I, w- I was like helping some of my martial arts friends with strength training. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And maybe I could help other people too. So I, um, I got a kettlebell certification and uh, I uh, randomly applied for a job across the country here in Portland. And why they hired me, I have no idea because I was not qualified. Um, but they saw something in me for some reason. So I moved and uh, I worked there for um, a few years and um, left there. And this is what I'm doing now. So... That's awesome. And that's where we met. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So then, so I'll backtrack, but yeah, I'm from Northern California. I, as I said, I studied um, art <laughs> in through like high school and college. Uh, and, but also was really always into movement as just like a form of stress relief, but also like for other reasons, which are more like uh, aesthetics and like, I have to be skinny because blah, blah, blah reasons. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it was both like a positive and negative in my life for a long time. Like for those, for those like kind of like uh, those reasons that it's kind of like was a dichotomy a little bit. um, Positive and negative. But anyway, um, so yeah, so then I went to college out in Vermont, uh, lived in San Francisco for a little bit, and then moved and here. Grand. Yeah, my grandmother lived there. Oh, cool! That's where my parents actually met, also, awesome. which is cool. But um, anyway, right, University so, of Vermont. No, no, I went to Bennington College. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So okay, where was I? So then, yeah, when I moved here, I had experience like working in kitchens and baking which I love everyone should know that uh, <laughs> that I love we do. 
sweet yep. treats. I mean, and Aaron does too. But anyway, so actually my first job when I moved here was I was making ice cream for a local ice cream company. But at the same time, I had just started taking kettlebell classes at like this, um, this like awesome. kettlebell only gym. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time as a woman that I was like curious about lifting Cause before mm-hmm. it was like all about the cardio and like all about how to not be strong. How to not be strong. You don't want that. You <laughs> definitely don't want that as a woman. Yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so then I was like, Oh, what is this? And then I was like, I went there and I was like, <gasps> like there was something in me that was like, Whoa, like there's something about this, like lifting thing that is really calling to me. And I like followed that. So was making ice cream and then also lifting uh, or like learning, like taking the classes and like three months in, I was like, I want to be a coach. So then I started learning like as I was uh, take, going to this gym and, um, and I eventually became a coach there and I was a coach there for a little while and then um, got some certifications, but the one, but I met Aaron at a certification, uh, a kettlebell one at that gym mm-hmm. And that's when we first met. And then like a couple months later, they hired me um, because Aaron was like, you should hire this girl. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nice one, Aaron. Nice. He didn't didn't even like me at that point. We were just like, I was like, oh, she's got some good skills. He wasn't, it wasn't even because like, well, what, what he said to me, is like, not because he thought I was cute. It was because like, actually I was good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Good. Yeah. He was playing the long game. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that'll, 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 and now uh, we're like, okay, let's start a, an Instagram basically to like talk about this business that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That will exist or that is starting to exist. We talk about it enough. We talk about it. People will believe us and they'll hire us. And then uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> and then it's it becomes a real thing. Yeah. So, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. What else do you want to know? <laughs> no, I think we're now we're caught up right up to where we are today. Okay. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. That's really cool. So obviously, uh, yeah, and you guys have I again obviously love everything you're you're both doing. The first program I got from you, we can talk about it if you want to, is the Sinister Special. So oh, yeah. the uh, Sean uh, Sean got the program, ran through it, completed the challenge. Uh, you guys obviously know Mike Conway. He, yeah. uh, I love Mike, but he's so he's he's like a, a modern day stoic samurai. He tested, <laughs> didn't film it, and he didn't submit it. Um, even back oh. in the days when we were still really really strong into really into the strong for stuff. But yeah. um, but he, it's funny. He said his foot slipped slightly on a swing, so he didn't count it, even though the bell reached the height. But he's he's really hard on himself. Um, oh my. Anyway, Love Mike. I bet we would have counted it. I would have counted it. Yeah. For sure. above. I would have too. Yeah. But, uh, so all three of us have done the program. Um, obviously loved it. And both of you have completed the challenge, correct? Yeah, yeah. we both did Sinister. Awesome. We both, neither of us have actually done that program, but we've had a bunch of students and a bunch of feedback yeah. from people who have. Yeah. But awesome. we, yeah, we, we made that. guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to have guinea pigs other than yourself because yeah, it's hard to like... <laughs> yeah because you can't test everything you can't test everything especially if you have like a goal that is uh (laughs) that you're working on specifically but um but yeah we both did sinister it both it took us both three tries um yeah and that program basically came out of like our so try. doing it and like, <laughs> yeah. well, what the hell was so hard about this test? Yeah, and what could we so, do to make it better? Yeah, or so like the training for it. Better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why there's a little bit of movement variety in that program. Yeah. Other than you know, just like the the basic program by itself is just one arm swings, and Turkish get ups. Yeah. Like, well, there's and probably it, a little bit better way to yeah. work on that. Yeah. So that's yeah. how it came. Oh, and I, and I agree with you. I think that the, uh, I, I, I have the book, uh, Simple and Sinister, obviously. I love it. It's great information there. Yeah. And, but I agree with you. I think that it's a, it is a good program. I think the Pablo program uh, sure. is really good, but I, yeah. 
I, I'm biased. I do think your variation of it is better. I thought the split squats were a great uh, variation of throwing there, the half get ups. And it's, I think the training stimulus is better, but it's also, it's exciting, right? It's a very yeah. little more. Yeah. You, you don't get bored um, right. because it's a, you don't just get sinister in, in a couple of months, right? It takes no. some, <laughs> some time. So no. uh, obviously. Yeah. So I, long? when I was first starting so back in the garage in Florida, with the 16, right? Well, no, I, no. I, I started it with, uh, I think, 20 kilos. Okay. okay. Just yeah. Nice. Give me that credit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I did I did the program for I, uh, 13 or 14 months straight. And it wasn't a problem to me because, like, it was, like, my side thing because my main focus was martial arts. Um, but I don't think, like, if the only, like, movement and exercise or whatever, if you will, uh, was – just that i don't think i would have stayed on it for that long because boring it's just it's two movements but because it was like your side I, thing yeah, yeah it was a side thing and just yeah. like assisting my martial arts like i was fine with it but otherwise like yeah like we're all like i don't know how people can just do the exact same two things for over a year yeah. like i think that you did it that long i'm actually impressed yeah because like, like it, yeah. it really from the time i ever started the program back in 2012 or whatever like the first time until I completed it was about six years. So like, could you imagine <laughs> if you did that for, no. I, don't think, I think it would have taken you way longer. Actually. Yeah. If, if ever. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> no, I <Some> agree. Variety. <laughs> it would yeah. make no, I agree. those movements. Yeah. If you only did that for six years, I don't know. I would. That's pretty insane. I do think that, uh, again, we'll say most people, I don't want to you know speak too generally, but right. I have noticed a tremendous um, uh, adaptations and, and, a, and an awesome training effect from going down that SNS simple and sinister route. I think uh, doing it for like three to six months yeah. uh, is definitely awesome for, I would say for most people, you know, obviously yeah. that have any, any contraindications or any injuries that would, uh, that would affect that. Right. I've actually been doing uh, variations of, of your program. I've been having, Sean's been kind of Frankensteining the program. Cool. Oh, cool. Uh, but I have been doing it for about a year, but I also had a little bit of a, of a training layoff. Um, so it wasn't a strict year. <laughs> that makes <laughs> so sense. Definitely had some down, some downtime, but it's, uh, it's, it's super fun. What yeah. would you say for each of you? I'd love to hear both of you talk, speak on this. What was the biggest thing you learned from the Sinister journey? Like as far as about yourself or um, period? Hmm. Someone else asked us this recently. Did they? Remember? I oh, I remember. I remember. <laughs> and I was or, like, what or did I say can, then? Or you can tell like a funny story that happened along oh, the way. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we have a lot of those. Um, hmm. That, um, <laughs> well, maybe like after doing that test, like I don't really do one arm swings anymore. <laughs> That's oh, really? Me yeah. either. <laughs> No, and you, it's not like I dislike swings. I think they're great. I just um you're just like so, over it. <laughs> yeah, I I'm kind of over it, but I also find more benefit in uh kettlebell snatches. So I'm like it's like I might as well just I'm snatch. just gonna snatch. But you know what? Okay, so, on the so flip that was side, a simple thing. I really I actually miss one arm swings. I love one arm swings, um, mm -hmm. especially like heavy, heavy. Um yeah. I love the way it feels. Um, but you know, I have like big snatch goals um so not that i couldn't also incorporate swings but it's just like after snatching very very consistently for years i'm like ooh, i'm excited for like one of the things i'm excited for after i do my snatch test is uh is to get back to one arm swings like heavy ones because awesome. I'm like, ooh, it'll feel good i mean i might <laughs> though i mean just thinking about it i'm like ooh, maybe i can like incorporate it right now because right whatever anyway <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't answer the other question. Um, Wait, what was the other question? The, well, the question you answered, that was part of your answer. Oh, okay. And I kind of commandeered that. But let's see. What did I learn from Sinister? Um, mm. I think like testing. The testing sucks. Testing. Yeah, you learned that. But you learn that every time you test. And I don't do it anymore. And you don't really do it anymore. He doesn't like endurance tests. Like ones that are, you did the one though recently that was the. Well, that was an hour. That, that was, was like an way... actual endurance. Yeah. yeah. That's not that's like a five the minute thing I've ever an hour. Like, oh, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> did it, oh, not like at that pace, but yeah. What did you do again? Tell, 
That's so what I, tell the people. I snatched uh, 36 kilos, uh, five reps. Uh, so five reps on the left and minute one, minute two is five on the right. And I just alternated like that for a full hour. Which so is 300. 300 snatches. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I... <sighs> I don't know. I don't even know what Bella would need to do that to get through to the hour, but that seems hey, pretty. Hey, Aaron, good. can I use your 16? I think I would need the 16. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can spare that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, 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 was not a, I was not expecting an hour on that one. I was like, yeah, for like 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, for an hour. I'm like, fuck, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Right, really yeah. Quickly. <laughs> well, for you to cram that volume into a half hour, like that's, that's probably where the cutoff is for you. Oh. I mean, that seems like still too much, obviously, but like I see. I see what you mean. It's like endurance, but it's, it's not, it's just like a prolonged thing to hit that volume of 300. So I think you and I are similar in that regard because yeah, I'd rather throw a couple extra minutes on the timer than try to cram it in. But there are times where I do that too. So yeah, Same. yeah. we want to advocate for like six minute snatch test. That could be great. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, the, and you're right. Snatch test is uh it's it's fun when you I mean, I don't know if it's ever fun. It's it's less it sucks less when you do it with other people, right? And there's music yeah. and atmosphere. By yourself just really sucks big time. Um, yep. <laughs> it's not as motivating for me. Yeah. Not, 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 not as pumped up. Obviously at yeah. the end of a, an event a, certif- a certification or something or for like the TSC when we yeah. uh, when we used to uh, uh, compete in that, that was obviously fun. Yeah. The, right. The, it's like a whole ritual, whereas like you're by yourself and you're like, <laughs> that's right. like what happens yeah. to me but um oh yeah so the thing I learned okay sinister it sucked um it was painful <laughs> uh it was not it's for me like the thing about tests like like that where you have to cram something into a specific amount of time like I just like feel my heart rate be like <sighs> just like oh, sure. about it, you know yeah. and like so it's this element of it's so mental for me like not that it's not physical obviously but like yeah to accept that you're about to do something that's going to be painful and that, you know, you're going to want to stop and you know, at this time, because normally when I train, I don't, I never cross that threshold where I'm like, I want to stop. And I, I don't let myself stop in regular training. So I'm so much more like used to that. Like I'm going to honor my, what my body is saying right now. Yeah. For me to like flip the switch on test day and like to get into that test, like that preparation mentally for a test to build up to being like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. When that timer goes, I'm going like, it's for me, that's like the hardest, like, I don't, I don't enjoy that. Like in regular training, like I just. And I find it's unnecessary in regular training, but testing is different than training. So I think that is yeah. sinister, but not only sinister, but like all the other like endurance C type of like yucky feeling tests that I've done. I, I come up against that, that dynamic that I'm oh. like, that is like a continual thing of like learning how to navigate. <laughs> I think yeah. that's, a great, that's a great topic all in itself it is uh, you know, training versus testing. I yeah. feel like we've all we've all been down that rabbit hole, or at least I I'll admit that I have. Um, list reading the 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 bodybuilding magazines from like the late the nineties and yeah. now, you know Arnold and and Lou Ferrigno and Fredo, failure. Like yeah. Test Monday, yep. and you have to max out on your bench press, and then go do your cable flies and your push ups and your deep you know incline bench. Yeah, um, I, it, it, it's I'm embarrassed to admit that it took me it did take me years to realize that this is not the best way to do it. Um, constantly maxing out and, you know, putting as much weight as you can on the bar, ego lifting. And thank God I was young and didn't get hurt. Yeah. But, you know, that, you know, like you said, training should be done, or excuse me, most of the time should be training. You're, you're working below your capacity. You're not trying to, you're not trying to kill yourself. Then testing, obviously, we flip that switch and, right. uh, you know, you, you, you unleash the, uh, unleash the beast, if you will. <laughs> yeah. so, Notice I said beast, by the way, that was a, that was, a I like that. <laughs> I, I saw oh, that. I, so I, yeah. Holly, are you, uh, on that note, are you still, what was the most, what was the most recent thing you did? Like you, I think you just missed the full hundred and the five minutes. Yeah, I did. I got 95. Right. And it, it, a funny story about that. I, I think I was, I was at a red light when you guys went live for that. And I got the notification. I so I pulled over. 
I pulled over so I could watch oh, it. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's so nice. I had to, you know, but you're um, like, oh, I gotta see this. Oh yeah, but, wow. But good, good thing I wasn't like on the highway because yeah, um, well, I just would have stopped dead dead in the middle of the highway. But, yeah. <laughs> um, <'Cause> everyone, <laughs> yeah. So are you are you still shooting for that extra couple, or is it like? So, um, okay. So that was last summer. Usually the summer is when I feel like it's like what I've found is like, for me, like the time it's like seasonal. It's like the time I feel like I have the most energy and I'm like, yeah. it seems like testing for me in the summer months is like great. Whereas yeah. for Iron Maiden, I did it in the winter, but I was just like, so ready to do it. It was like, whatever. And I just had to do it then. But I'm just saying if it was, if it's up to me, which it is, um to like when I test um like it feels like it's gonna be like a spring summer thing uh yeah, yeah. for this year when I'm gonna attempt again I am gonna attempt it at least one more time um I think last time I was strong enough to do it I think I just there were so right after the end when I finally could like breathe which I took like after the camera stopped after the live we turned it off how long was I like how long was I like in pain <laughs> like, like 20 the rest minutes of the day almost well okay <laughs> but then we went and got ice cream and tacos and yeah. then it was better yeah but before that makes but, everything better that's an adult band-aid that's mean, an adult uh, band-aid <laughs> i mean yeah exactly so but i was like i was like wheezing like i couldn't it was not pretty like the 20 minutes after kind of especially that snatch us but i think um i learned that there were a couple of different things in terms of like strategy that I would do differently next time. Um, but I think it was like, I think I physically could have done it. Cause literally I did 95. Like I, there was just five more. And I had like, if I had like 30 more seconds, I definitely could have, I would have done it that day, but you know, that's why I'm saying six minutes, not just, that would be great. But yeah. <laughs> especially when it's 40% of your body weight. Um, right, but right. in any case, like, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just keep talking about snatch tests. Oh yeah. Um, just, there are things that I, I, we immediately, once I felt better, like once I could actually like sip water and talk, <laughs> we immediately <laughs> were like, Oh, that was amazing. And what are we going to do next to like, to like make it so you'll definitely get it. We got out the dry erase markers, which we have because we we write like business notes and like programming like, our planning windows. on our kitchen window. So yeah. it's like covered in dry erase markers. So we got the markers out. We're like writing. Oh, we're going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make sure I one thing was like, oh, I didn't eat for like hours before that. That was dumb. <laughs> just like oh. little things like that. You know, you're like, oh, like if just a couple of those things had been slightly yeah. different you're like oh I could have done that but yeah I think I do I think it just I needed a big break to like bring it back around like I needed just like a longer yeah. break from the intense focus on that um just like because like mentally but also physically like because it took a lot out of me but it just yeah you just need to like keep thing you need to listen to your body and like I agree your mind fresh with some stuff like you can still do like work on adjacent goals that will still keep your strength. And like, I've still been snatching this whole time since then. Yeah, um, right. So like, it's, it's like, I'm maintaining there, but like focusing harder on, I have been focusing harder on some other stuff. But um, once I'm done testing my pistol, I'm going to get back into like a little bit more intense snatch practice. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and I obviously admire, admire both of you for, you know, a lot of people are very quick to post, you know, PRs and, and successes, but it, it takes humility to post, uh, you know, I, I hate using that, that pesky F word, but uh, we'll just say times when you don't quite hit the mark. Uh, per yeah. se. So I hate the, I hate, that's the F word I hate. The other F word's okay, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to love both. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think you're right about that. Like there, you know, there is a, a better time to test. If you figured that, that out for your body, you know, yeah. the last time I officially tested uh, with Sean, it's been months ago now and I'm not yeah. testing anytime soon, yeah. uh, but it was a, uh, it was a good time. I felt good ate and, and was, and was rested, but I just wasn't, I'm just wasn't there yet. And it's okay. Yeah. I it's it okay. got frustrated. Bell height was terrible. And, uh, and Sean said, it's all good, man. Today is just not today. You know, yeah. you're, we just set it down and we're like, okay, we'll come back next time. So yeah, it's all the process. 
Totally. Right? It takes so much to like, um, to like reprogram our ideas about that F word and like yeah. see it as like a total opportunity to like refine even more. Mm-hmm. Like, so you, you actually do get to whatever you hit the mark or you don't. And you're like, you don't hate yourself. There's like, <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. And that's one of the, I'll be honest, the very first thing that you both taught me and challenged me with uh, before I even knew who you were, I think Mike or it was maybe Mike or Sean had shown me your page and I saw one of your videos working out outside. I was like, these people are, they seem pretty cool. I'm going to check them out. And, uh, but I, I think it was Holly, I think you posted something uh, and we're going back probably two or three years now, but basically talked about how you, you don't have to train to punish yourself. You know, you don't yeah. have to punish the, the food that you ate or the alcohol that you drank or whatever. Um, you know, we're, we're training to celebrate what your body's capable of. And you don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to lift a certain amount of weight. You know, you don't, you don't have to fit this, uh, this mold that we all see in, in obviously advertisements. I wish justice were here. Justice, we've talked about it with him as well and how it's, uh, we're just, we're sold this very shallow image of what we are supposed to be, you know, quote unquote. And, uh, I think about it even more now, now that I have a daughter and I've got a, you know, she's yeah. a young, young lady one it's, day. And it's, it's like, uh, like a PG fight club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's very, you know, it's very, a lot of toxic images are in there. And mm-hmm. I love that you were you were willing to kind of kind of continue that conversation and talk about hey you know like you mentioned uh, I think I remember one time you said yeah Aaron's out bent pressing but I took a nap today because I don't feel very good <laughs> yeah. I'm resting um, I love that because everyone yeah. goes on Instagram they think oh hashtag yeah. on my grind I got to be going oh, a yeah. thousand miles a minute every second of every day and if I'm not I'm That's not so that. unrealistic yeah it's so stupid I mean it's just not how life works. No, you know, you, no. you can't, you can't go hard all the time. I mean, at no. least I, I sure as hell can. No, <laughs> I don't it out either. no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, it's very important. It's, it's, it's an interesting, I love that you responded to that. Like the one but like, yeah, I took a nap. Like I just woke up from a nap. There he is. I feel good though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, uh, that's like oftentimes the case. Cause like, uh, like just that whole like just comparing like we're so inundated with like we should be comparing ourselves to each other to you to anyone you see on Instagram like there's but the context is so it's like it's lacking context right like Aaron's a different person than me he's gonna train differently than me and that's okay and that's like should be it's it not even should but just like it makes sense to not fight stuff you know like not fight Mm -hmm. against all the time like what and you think you should be like a machine but humans are not machines and like well and the same thing like with yourself in different time periods too oh yeah like oh but you you 15 years ago well you're a different person so (laughs) yeah how is that relevant yeah Right. right but every but people we're all like we all sometimes like get into that mindset but it's important to like kind of pull back and be like, wait a second, wait a second. Why right. am I thinking like that? Hey, that who does that help? <laughs> who is actually like benefiting from me thinking like that? Ooh. And then it gets really interesting. Yeah. We're all oh, human. Oh, and you know, Mike, Oh, go ahead, Sean. No, I just saying we're all human. We have those like yeah. uh, I don't know, vulnerable moments, but where, where you compare yourself to before you were hurt and then you're like, yeah. well, I'm hurt. I, you know, am I going to sulk or am I just going to embrace the journey back to, you know, not being hurt anymore. And and then I can build on and try to get back to where I was. Don't, don't like beat yourself up that you're not there, you know, while you're hurt. It just doesn't work like that. Right. Exactly. Right. Or even that, like, but that idea of like, not to like, I totally like, yes to what you said but then there's also inherent in that like the that people think they need to get back to something like but even that idea of like yeah well why can't my life just be like a fluid like Mm -hmm. thing like you know you don't know then and without like it's a story and I don't know the ending and like I was doing that at this point and I I sure like I was stronger at this at this point, but then like, who says I need to like somehow always be that strong in that sure. way? Or like, it doesn't even, it's not even just about strength, but I, I think about it in like a, a bigger way too. like, 
when people assume that their life has to like take a certain trajectory. Mm -hmm. It's hard though to like, not, I'm saying that as like, not that I do that perfectly, but I'm just saying like, that's something I try to be mindful of within myself. Like, like, so this is something I used to think, but do I still want to keep thinking that like that thing? Right. I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent on that. Uh, because I, again, you know, I've talked about, uh, having a beautiful baby girl and life yeah. changing tremendously, you know, Sean and I, we were, we were going hard in the paint, high volume, you know, I finished the, 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 uh, sinister special program was, was having fun, making amazing strength gains. And, uh, then my wife popped out a baby and, uh, <laughs> life changed a little bit. And Sean and I have been figuring out, uh, what I can do, and most importantly, what I should and shouldn't do. You know, we mm-hmm. we drop down. We were doing four, sometimes five days a week training, and that just that's I can't do that anymore. Yes. My body will literally break down, yeah. um, and that's you know we we've gone down to three times a week, and we're adjusting the volume, and uh, that's kudos to Sean for being a great coach and and also being relationship driven and Yay. paying attention and, and being ready to adapt and, and change to. Uh, to changing circumstances, but that's why we call it personal training, right? It's personal to the person sure. and life is obviously a journey. Yeah. It's not linear. Nothing in yeah. life is linear. We expect it to be linear. Right. You know, like you said, I should, I should be able to lift this amount of weight by this date or yeah. do this, do that. But it's, it's so it's context is key. I think you're, you said it best context is certainly key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have to be really mindful though, when we like engage, especially on like social media, because that's kind of the way that we see a lot of people nowadays, but like, especially during the pandemic, I think like, it's just, we have to go to it with that lens of like, okay, I'm seeing this part of the story, but I don't know all the context here. Sure. Like they may be doing this for some reason that I have no idea about. Like it's, and I think there's this, also this thing in fitness where it's like, people assume that they know things just based on like seeing someone do something, a movement, and you can tell some things about that movement, but there's a lot that you can't see. And like, I will also like, um, shout out to Damali. I don't know if I love Damali. She's been a guest on here. She's badass. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. She's so badass. But like the way that she, her, one of her recent posts was like, um, you know, what you can see and what you can't see. Like, you Mm -hmm. can't see that I didn't sleep well last night that I can, that I, whatever. It's just like, there's so much. And that's so important, I think, for us to hold when we, like, especially as coaches to not assume so much about people's bodies. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I'm obviously obsessed with this concept today. I keep, <laughs> again, being relationship driven, I that's something yeah. I'm really into. Uh, and that's obviously where communicating, asking questions, you know, that's Sean, uh, Mike, Tommy, and I have pretty much uh, kind of, develop this quote unquote system. I'm sure many other coaches do it too, but it's, you know, yeah. how are you feeling? How'd you sleep last night? How's, how's your food? You know, what, how's life going? Yeah. How's your stress level? And uh, that's going to change from day to day. You know, Sean yeah. and I have sessions where uh, I have some days where, oh, Vivi slept six or seven hours last night. I feel amazing. Yeah. Uh, I feel great. Let's, let's get after the, let's, let's grab the beast and go for it. And yeah. then some days where she was up every couple of hours, I feel like absolute shit. Let's grab yeah. the 36 instead of the 44. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. So definitely, uh, you know, adjust. So definitely. Um, do we have to? Yeah, we have to go. We have to go. We're, we have a, uh, we, have a we have a boba oh, date. We have a boba date. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're about wrapped up. So that's yeah, yeah, it's about right, right. Let's, yeah, let's close, perfect. Let's, let's close out really quick with where everyone can find you. And obviously you've got the okay. hot and fresh program uh, that's yeah. coming out soon. So where can people find you? And yeah. I'll put it all below. Sure. Okay. Um, so hot and fresh is coming out on at the end of this month on the 29th. Yes. And, um, a week after that, so it's a Saturday, a week after that, we're holding a Q and a live Q and a webinar for anyone who buys it. So like you can take a second to look through it and then ask us your questions and whatever. It should be fun. Um, but the pre-sale is live now so they can find it like through the link in our bio or at our website, um, link in our bio on our Instagram, which is lift with Holly and Aaron. Aaron's spelled weird. Spelled weird, and it's not Darren. Uh, people think it's Darren. <laughs> think my name is Darren. I'm, like, I'm not a Darren, and it's not Darren. I love how you got there. <laughs> well, I can see there. Yeah, I'm just not a Darren. 
Um, but uh, so yeah, you can basically, yeah, if you find us on our Instagram, it'll take you the link in our bio will take you to a bunch of things, but like, it'll take you to our website where you can see more stuff that we do. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks thank you fun. both so much for being on. And uh, this was awesome. I it could definitely turn this into a Joe Rogan thing and go four or five hours, but <laughs> <laughs> you could. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, well, yeah, we can. I mean, always happy to stay in touch. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And you awesome. to Tommy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it was great to so meet much. you guys as well. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. All right. Bye, all. You as well. Bye. You guys, too. See you.